ASP here, and I'm with Art, who portrays as a 369th. So Art, take it away. Well, what I'm wearing today is the uniform of the American or African-American soldier in World War I that fought under French units. The 369th Infantry, formerly the 15th New York National Guard, is who we represent as reenactors. Now, I'll give you a little nomenclature about the uniform. First of all, the rifle. This is a three-shot Berthier rifle. Uh, the American troops carried this along with the French. And the reason why is we had to use French uniforms, French equipment, because the French were our main source of supply. We, as Americans, kept our uniforms, which are the olive drab, wool uniforms. But other than that, we wore French helmets. Okay, we wore uh, French gas masks, which is the M2 gas mask. I'm carrying a set of French binoculars. Um, over here you'll see a French haversack and this is also the French Quillion bayonet which goes on on the muzzle of this weapon here. Okay, uh, What you see here is a World War I trench watch with the leather, uh, leather strap here. It actually, this strap actually came back when I was a kid in the 70s. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, here's the patch, our unit patch. Now, this is post-war. Okay, this, these patches actually were sewn on when the guys went back or in 1919 when they were still occupation forces over there. Okay. Okay. Uh, I also have a full kit on, full backpack. All French. All French. What you see on the top is the French mess kit. It's a French uh, backpack, and on the sides I have a set of extra boots. If you notice the hobnails on the boots, they were to help the soldier get in and out of the trenches much easier. Traction, basically. For traction. Now, if you look at the boots I have on, I use these for living history when I'm in buildings so I don't slip and fall. These things are murder <laughs> if you're on a hard surface. Okay? Okay. Um, basically, I'm you know that's just a quick uh, example of the uniform. All right, this wool is it gets very hot sometimes, but your sweat actually wicks, so you don't stay soaked. Okay. Compared to cotton. Compared to cotton. Compared to cotton. And of course, under underneath this tunic, I have a wool shirt on as well. Okay. Okay. And a lot of times you'll use suspenders or a belt. Okay. Now, late in the war. 369th Infantry's commanding officer, Colonel Haywood. Hayward actually got us U.S. helmets. Okay, this is the uh, Brody helmet. It's worn by the British and Americans. Okay, and you can see this is a re reproduction. But if you look on the inside, it's pretty close to what the real one looked like. Okay. Okay. All right, and all my gear, most of my gear I keep in this foot locker. I have a lot of other stuff at home. But it's good to have a locker that uh, has all your kit in case you need something, you just go in and pull it out. Now on top of, the name on top of this foot locker is Sergeant William Butler. He was in uh, Lima Company in the 369th. He was one of the biggest heroes in the 369th. He had saved, he had saved a lot of American prisoners from being captured by the Germans. I believe he cut down about seven or eight Germans with a show show, which is an automatic uh, French uh, weapon. Okay, now inside this foot locker. Okay, you have some interesting things. Let me look at this. Okay, first of all, an essential tool for all infantry soldiers in World War I were wire cutters. These are some French, uh, I believe they're Peugeot wire cutters. Okay. And uh, this is something I should have had on my belt when I was firing. But these are essential for getting through lines and getting to the uh, enemy lines. You know, they're gonna, you're gonna need something to cut through that wire. What we have over here, U.S. mess kit. These are the mess kits that the Americans carried in World War I, and a lot of this stuff was maintained and kept by U.S. forces, even though uh, they used French, uh, you know, mess kits as well. Okay. Our mess kits were much more advanced. Uh, I don't know where my utensils are. Here are the utensils right here for the mess kit. I keep, in a, keep them in a leather sheath. You know, you usually get a fork, a knife, and a spoon. 
where my fork is, but when we're actually doing tactical reenactments, I just use a spoon anyway. Okay. Okay. Over here, we have a, uh, this is a uh, reproducer flask. This flask, you know, they carried, you know, I guess wine or they had brandy or something. Yeah. What's that? Over here yeah, yeah. is what He's you use for you. your, um, uh, your salt. Hey, your sugar, you got a ration, you can put coffee in it, <laughs> yeah. okay, Basically, and you would take it and it would go in this can on one side and it would fill up to about here, and then on the other side, you would fill it up here and it had another storage area there. Okay. Okay, so that's how that works. Okay, here's a straight razor for close combat. <laughs> now that's for actually, actually for your shaving. Okay, but it's a straight razor. Stray razor. Yeah. And I have other things like extra original buttons here. If you can see them down in here. Yes. Okay. Now this is called, this is something that was issued to American troops called a meat can. Okay, and you would put your bacon ration and things like that in there. Your meat ration and it would go in here. Model, model of 1916. It's a model, model, model of 1916 meat yep. can. Okay. Now this particular item here is a French cup. All right, this is what actually went on to this canteen. If you look up here, my string broke, but they would carry this and it would tie onto the top of the canteen so they could pour whatever they were drinking in the cup that they want. Or they could actually pop the stopper here and lift it up, uh -huh. okay? Get that back. Now this is something essential in the trenches it would hook to your buttonhole on your collar, okay? And it was a trench light, flashlight, okay? It was battery operated. The battery would go in here. This would unclip right here. I don't want to fool with it too much. Yeah, battery would go in here. You close it. And somewhere on here, you would hit a, I think it would just light up. Okay. And you have your bulb in here, okay? I've never used it, but it's original. Okay. And over here we have an American gas mask. It's an original gas mask. It's in pretty good shape. I just don't like to handle it too much because the uh, tube here gets brittle. Okay. And it's liable to break. And of course you have your overseas cap okay, that we wore uh, off duty. Well, we wore it, you know, when we weren't uh, in combat. Okay, and this is a birthday. This is a birthday revolver. Okay, a lot of officers carried this, and NCOs. Okay, they carried this uh, particular weapon. And over here, you you have an original Bible. And this particular Bible I bought because it was inscribed. I think I believe it came from a uh, guy's parents, from his mother. Okay. And he sent this to him, and he carried this in the in the AEF during World War One. Nice. Okay, and I thought that was neat, and it had a had a note in here, and it was uh, it was uh, some Bible verses. Okay. And over here, you have a military record book, you know, with your picture of uh, President Woodrow Wilson here, and this is a French soldier's phrase book. These are all original. French soldiers phrase book so the guys could pick up a little courtesies in French and they could talk, you know, at least deal with the French with, you know, small uh -huh. talk, okay? Yes, sir. All right. And here is the uh, 1917 infantry manual. Everybody was issued those things, okay? And I could see uh, Bertier clips. Yeah, and over here you have, these are blanks in here. I'm going to get some blank ball rounds and put in here. But these are the three-shot Berthier clips that would go in this three-shot rifle. Okay, in my ammo box here, I believe I have a five-shot. If I still have it, no, I don't. But you had a five. You have a five-shot clip, right? Yeah, but I don't know where I put it. It's probably in my pocket. I don't know, I have to go back down here and look. All but, right. Uh, 
This is a stripper clip that we're going in 03. Okay, and these are 03 blanks. All right, 30 out six blanks. Okay, so this particular little item here is it goes on top of it, and it's a uh, it's a uh, it's trench shield. It's a shield for your uh, watch. Okay. Okay. You know, so you don't. It's a shrapnel shield they call it. And if you had it on, and I didn't put it on. But you put this on and rocks and things wouldn't break your uh, crystal. Okay. Nice. All right. And nothing interesting under here. It's just clothes. The same thing I'm wearing now. It's just, uh, you know, another issue of uh, uniforms. And an American 48 star flag. Nice. Okay. Uh, well, that concludes what I have here. And uh, if you ever want to learn more about uh, blacks in World War One. Uh, specifically the 93rd Infantry Division, you can go to ebonydoughboys.org. Thank you very much. Thank you, Art. Thank you. Fantastic. Fantastic. See how you did. You know, again, the fundamentals are there. That's this is the M16 Bertier rifle. And I'm going to give you a demonstration on it, on how to fire it. All right. First, we loaded the uh, magazine, slammed the bullet the round is chambered. <laughs> I know. Definitely have to have him at our veterans tribute when we do World War One. Oof! Hope I hit it. Ah, <laughs> uh, Trenton area. Ah. Yeah. I don't know what that was? Don't tell me the firing pin's not working. Right. Barbara, we well, we scheduled for one. Barbara had trouble with her car. Clip came out. Supposed to. Um, but Barbara wanted to make her beams and cross side. Oh, yeah. Take your car beam back. Jeez, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're going to do a target change soon. I would like to do one more. Stan, second one on the, on the, from the left? Or from the right, I mean? One, two, three. You're the fourth target over. Fourth Hit it again. Yeah. Never extracted fourth it. Fourth frame. Yeah, never chambered in. Ooh. There we go again. The combat load that one. This is what the 369s had to deal with. Had to deal with that. A lot of headaches. This is not a reliable rifle compared to the Springfield 03. So. Sometimes you just have to combat load it. I'll reload these clips. Should be a little. Now, American forces late in the war, the 369th actually got the uh, Brody steel helmet, and they got rid of their French helmets. Gave them a, more of an identification of U.S. troops with this helmet on. So, and I'm going to fire another three rounds. And I go to the prone position. Firing line clear? Yeah, you can. Sorry, Todd. Leg up. <laughs> the price of 22 ammo has dropped dramatically. Yeah, I was at it was twenty-five dollars for a brick of five hundred. Yeah, twenty-five dollars for a brick of five hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Good for a target change in the moment. Yeah. Okay. Are you going to stop after this? Okay. This firing thing needs to lose here. Yeah. You can play with it if you want. No, I'm just, I want one. Yeah, you want one. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Is it hitting? Uh, yeah, it's hitting. I don't know if this, this round that might be bad. Has got problems. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Could be the round. I think it's the round. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Like that. Cool. That's it. You got it. Get the Janet forward. Close. Okay. 
Hot dog. I got that mess kit. See how this gear is? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a woman. Combat loaded. Combat loading again. Okay. Real going down there. Both sides. Okay. Here's another clip. Yes. Alright. Okay. Alright, you got three prone. Put this other helmet back on. Three prone, three kneeling. A lot of standing. A lot of standing. We got two left. That got some live rounds left. Oh, do you? Yeah, one's bad. Some All right. the primer's bad on that. Oh, okay. Fatigue cap, it, it would differ. And your belt ensemble would be according to which rifle you use. Mm -hmm. This belt ensemble is for the uh, M4570. You notice it opens up and have the place for your cartridges, yeah. Yeah. Which is different from the traditional Civil War type. 